Okay, welcome to this session of RD Works Learning Lab. I'm afraid the RD Works element has already gone because I've used RD Works and I've cut these pieces. That's boring stuff that you don't really want to so see. If you're not interested in assembling this particular clamp, then you might as well just skip to the end and um, I'll see you in another session. Let's start the assembly off with one of these key items here. Now this hole here is for a spring or a spring hanger and typical spring hanger looks something like this with a groove in the end so that the spring can clip over the end of it but the problem is this spring hanger is going to be floating like this and I don't really want it to be floating so what I've done I've adopted a slightly different approach I've made myself a small stud out of M4 material and that stud screws into that hole. Now that does one major thing for me which is to stop it floating around. The second thing that it does because it's got a thread on it the springs clip on there and they don't come off so it acts like a spring hanger and if they are a little bit loose then we can just nip the spring hook up very slightly so that it does actually sit snugly on the thread like that so we put the springs downwards on here and we will make sure that we take this plate which has got the countersink holes in it and we'll have the countersink holes towards the back of the unit because that's the front and we'll drop this plate into the central slot so that it can slide backwards and forwards now at the moment you can see it's um, it's pretty wobbly it doesn't have to be a super duper fit is to take these two 15 millimeter long or 14 millimeter long pins which I've cut off a piece of 1 8 diameter stainless steel welding rod you just pop them into those holes they're in the bottom here we go I'll push that one through with my fingernails so that it sits nicely level and that now captivates that piece there it also stops most of the rock so bear in mind this is the front of the unit one of these pieces has got countersunk holes in it and we'll put that on the front there and one of these pieces has got tap holes in it, M4 tap holes, we'll put that on the back and then what I've got here is a couple of 15 millimeter long countersunk screws which I'm going to pop through there and lightly screw together so we'll tighten it up and then we'll back it off half a turn now the reason I'm doing that is because if there is any slack between these pins and the base plate here the top will be loose and wobbly and rock around so what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply pressure with my thumb onto this bottom plate here where the springs are this center plate and I'm going to push it upwards and at the same time I'm going to apply pressure to these two outer plates and as you can see there's a slight gap in the middle here purposely so that when you press that and the bottom you won't be pressing them together you'll be pressing them against each other now what that will enable you to do is to lightly tighten up these screws now and check that this plate still moves but you'll also notice that what it's done is taken all the rock out of it we've used that as a mechanism for taking all the clearance out of the system then you can tighten up these screws just a little bit more just to firm up the setting and there we go we can now put the bottom plate on so we put the tapped holes and the count sink hole together and with some 12 sorry some 10 millimeter long countersunk screws we'll screw these two plates together now the problem you've got with um, acrylic five millimeter acrylic it's generally always cast material and the problem with cast acrylic is they actually pour the liquid acrylic between two large thick sheets of glass you can get maybe plus or minus half a millimetre variation across a sheet of cast acrylic so this could be nine millimetres thick 
or it could be 11 millimeters. Although I started off making all these gaps in here nominally 5 millimeters, I think I finished up making them, programming them at 5.2 or 5.3. We'll take a pin which I've cut to fit into that little slot there and we slip that pin through these two springs. So we now stretch the pin and the springs together and click them into that slot. We've now got our horizontal movement which is sprung loaded. So it's always pulled towards the back of the machine. Through here I've designed some little square slots or some rectangular slots and here is a thin square M5 nut. You'll be able to buy these small nuts from your uh, local fastener distributor. I'm going to have to use a pair of pliers or something. I've got a, an allen key here look and I'm going to very carefully try and tease that across to the other side of the slot and sit it in a central position there. This is something like about a 16 millimeter um, M5 grub screw. And we'll wind it forward. Okay, so now we're adjusting the clamp out. A small gap here which is two millimeters wide and another gap there which is two millimeters wide and that tooth in the middle which is two millimeters wide and then there's a slot right up the middle of it and that slot is the central position, the nominal central position for this particular unit. So now you just about see the slot. What I'm going to do is adjust that so that that slot comes right on the edge of the material and when that little central slot is right in the edge of the material that's the nominal central position for this clamp and now you've got three millimeters adjustment either side of that center point. Right, well, what we've got here are two pairs of top arms. These are the pieces that clip over the top here. Now there are some that look like little birds with a beak on and some that two that do not and it's the two that we don't, two, that, two without beaks on that we'll work with to start with. We've also got these two pieces as well. This piece here is the front of the unit and these pieces with the knobs on go towards the front of the unit and the ordinary plane ends here they will go to the back. So what I'm going to do is drop those into the outer slot there. And if at this point these don't drop into that slot it's probably because your screw might not be in the centre. Now as you can see here my screw is not right in the centre but I can grab hold of a pair of pliers and I can just gently adjust that across so that the gap on this side is the same as the gap on that side. I've got a piece of studding here which I've already pre-cut and what I'm going to do I'm going to put a, um, a, a dome nut on the end there and screw the dome nut on so that it's nice and snug and tight. Now I'm going to put it through the first part then I'm going to put through one of these half arms we'll pop it through there and then it goes through the upright section here and then we've got this little disc we're going to slide the disc in, now this is a little bit tricky this one There we go, that goes in. Now we're going to put the other arm on. And we tighten those up hand tight. But at the moment, one thing that we've missed out is this little piece here. Now, just for a moment, we'll just loosen this off just a bit so that these arms here are a little bit floppy and we'll pop this piece in between the two arms. This is a spacer but it's also your clamp bar. Right, we'll gently loosen it off a little bit more just so that we don't stray, strain it and there we go. At the moment it's all floppy and wobbly but as soon as you tighten up this screw here it becomes a nice stiff assembly. Now we do something similar on the other side. 
with a couple of doughnuts. We'll put one of them on first. And this time we'll put a little bird on. And we'll have the beak pointing outwards. Then again in the middle space we need a little disc. Now we'll put the other little bird on. And finally, before we tighten everything up, we'll remember to put this little piece between the arms here. And then we'll tighten the arm up. Hopefully you'll notice now that when I bring these arms together, if you look carefully you'll see there's a little slot in this side and a little tongue on this side. Now what they will do when they come together they will lock together and they prevent the tube from moving sideways. We'll now take one of these nuts off and we'll replace that with a wing nut. You'll see that just below this nut here we've got another slot and that slot is for another one of these square nuts. So I'm now going to put another 16mm grub screw into here. Now you'll notice that these little beaky bird bits line up with slots that I've put on this outside face here. Now there are seven slots, six positions, plus or minus three millimetres. So what we're going to do is to set this up to its nominal position we can wind, loosen off the grub screw, loosen off the wing nut and we can wind this up so that the little birdie bits sit on the central slot. There's no spring mechanism to lock this in place. I did have springs on here originally to hold this in one position but I thought the weight of the unit will actually do that job for me and it looks a lot neater without the springs on it. The previous version of this design had got the tube sitting on three pieces of rubber foam. One of them was at the bottom here and the other two were at 120 degrees around the top here. And the problem with that is there is no absolute certainty rest position for the tube. So this time I've changed the design and what I've got, I've got hard nest at the bottom here for the tube to sit in. And then we're going to put our pieces of foam rubber around the top to clamp the tube down into a fixed position at the bottom. Here I've got a reel of sort of foam gasket tape and I'm not going to be particularly fussy about this. I'm just going to put a piece of self-adhesive tape across that gap there, like that. And across that gap there. Take the protective film off. It's not sticky underneath there. This is a nice, just shiny, slightly grippy, rubbery surface but make sure you loosen off the screw so that it sits down. You're basically using this screw like a backstop. And only when you've got it set to the right position lock it up so that it doesn't move. And there we go, that's the Mark II clamp design. If you're interested in making a set of these for yourself, um, I've got no problems with sending you the DXF file. You'll obviously have to use your CAD system to adapt it for your machine. The DXF file will also have information on it about all the fittings, the springs, the screws, the length of dowels and things like that. So there'll be a complete package when you watch this film and the drawings as to how to make your own clamps. So all you've got to do is message me on the YouTube message and send me your email and a request. Even if you sent me uh, a request for the first version, just send me your email address again so it's much easier for me to just send it straight back to you. Well, thanks again for watching and I will see you in another session shortly.